remember those Star Wars cookies from back in the 1980s? Epridge Farm remembers. Yes, one of the more memorable Star Wars food items from the 80s were Star Wars cookies from Pepperidge Farm in 1983. Here's the original television commercial. You may enter a galaxy far, far away. R2D Toa. With all your favorite Star Wars heroes. In all your favorite flavors. Chocolate, vanilla, and peanut butter. Star Wars cookies from Pepperidge Farm. The new taste in space. Each of the three flavors had cookies in the shapes of different characters. Vanilla had characters from the Rebel Alliance, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, Yoda, and Wicket. The likenesses of the non-human characters were actually pretty good. The humans were... less good... But these are cookies after all. It was just cool to have all these different characters. The peanut butter flavor featured more rebels, Admiral Akbar, Chewbacca, C-3PO, R2-D2, and Max Rebo, although I think calling Max Rebo a rebel is a bit of a stretch. Finally, the Imperial forces were chocolate flavor, because of course they were. These included Darth Vader, the Emperor's Royal Guard, Bib Fortuna, a Gamorrean Guard, and Jabba the Hutt. By the way, you may notice that Jabba the Hutt is the only character pictured twice on the back of any of these boxes. Clearly, they knew they had a good thing going with him. Come to think of it, three out of five of the characters weren't Imperials at all. If you can't expect accuracy from your cookies, where can you expect it? Speaking of which, can we take a second to talk about the sculpt they used for this cookie? This is the only licensed version of Jabba that I can recall that shows him with teeth. And just look at the way he's smiling there. It's, it's a little disturbing. In addition to the cookies themselves, Pepperidge Farm also made some plastic tumblers with Star Wars characters on them, presumably for enjoying a refreshing glass of milk with your cookies. Some of the tumblers were part of a mail-away offer, and I don't actually have these in my collection. Note to self, buy these tumblers. But as you can see by this store display, later on they gave away some other tumblers in stores. One cup for every box of cookies you bought. Each cup featured different characters, and... They all had characters from Jabba's palace on them, which is kind of cool. And there was a short description of the characters on the back as well. However, the cups were made of very thin plastic, and the lip around the edge was also kind of sharp, so these seem more like something you might use once and throw away, actually. Still, it would have been cool to kick back with a plate of Jabba cookies and a tumbler of milk with Jabba on it. You know, the more I read about these cookies, the more I want to eat them again particularly the Jabba the Hutt cookie, for obvious reasons, I do have a couple of the original boxes in my collection, complete with a few of the original crumbs, but of course, the cookies themselves are long gone. I wonder if the cookies would still be good after all of these years. I've eaten some Star Wars candy from 1983 before, and it was actually fine. I seem to recall that Richard from the Star Wars Obsessed channel actually saved some of the vanilla cookies in the box. Let's check in with him and see how they held up. Hello, I'm Richard from Star Wars Obsessed. These cookies came out in 1983. And the expiration date is October 1st, 1983. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five cookies. So, ooh, that does not smell good at all. Ooh. Okay, here's the first cookie. Oh, and it feels, feels very soft. This looks like Han Solo. Yep, this is Han Solo. That's the Han Solo cookie. Ooh, no, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I don't even want to. It's very crumbly, and it's very powdery. It's all over my, getting all over my fingers. So here's Princess Leia. Here's Wicket. And the last one is Yoda. You can barely see what that says. All right, well, I can't describe the smell, but it's permeating. It's just, it's just not staying on the cookie. It is, it is enveloping the room. 
But these are the Pepperidge Farm Star Wars cookies. It would be nice if they would remake these, sell them in stores again. That would be fun. Kind of a nostalgia trip. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Richard. I also found this photo from StarWars.com of some of the chocolate cookies that had been in a sealed box until fairly recently, and they don't look too appetizing. So yeah, it doesn't look like trying to track down any of the remaining cookies would be such a great idea. But maybe there's another option. I've known for years that many of the original tooling masters for the cookies, like these here, and the original brass molds for the cookies were in the hands of collectors. If I could get one of those, maybe I could recreate the Java cookie myself. However, until recently there hadn't been any signs of them going up for sale. But in late 2015, something very interesting showed up on eBay. Someone happened to be selling some brass molds that looked a lot like they were for the Pepperidge Farm cookies, but they were different from the ones in people's collections. In fact, they seemed to have more detail than the other molds, and incredibly, there were Cy Snoodles and Droopy McCool molds, even though they never made cookies for those characters. Also, Droopy McCool was labeled Dur Droopy, which is still a mystery to me. The seller didn't seem to know what they had at first, and sold the first one or two molds for very low buy-it-now amounts, but apparently a deluge of emails from Star Wars collectors alerted them to the fact that they had something special, because the rest they sold at auction, and they went for pretty high prices too. I bid on a number of them, and really had my heart set on getting the Jabba the Hutt mold in particular, but... It ended up selling for nearly $1,000, which was way out of my budget. Just to be clear, I didn't just want the mold to be able to make cookies from it. It's a great piece of Star Wars merchandising history for one of the very few Jabba the Hutt-related food items that's ever been made. But still, how cool would it be to take a casting from the mold and use it to make my own Pepperidge Farm Jabba the Hutt cookies, more than 30 years after they disappeared from the market? Unfortunately, it looked like this particular dream was never going to come true. But then, a few weeks ago, it occurred to me that while I don't have the mold, I did save some high-quality photos of the mold from the eBay auction. I also have a 3D printer. Couldn't I somehow use these photos to recreate the mold? Now, my first thought was to use a website like selva3d.com, which is able to take a photo and translate it into a 3D model suitable for printing. I worked on this for quite a while, and at first the results seemed pretty promising, although I did have to do a lot of adjusting. But the model created by Selva 3D had a lot of digital noise that made it difficult to see the key details in the mold. You could see Java's facial features if you squinted, but it wasn't ideal. This is the mold I created using this method, and here is a test I did with some clay. It's not terrible, but not as good as I had hoped. Then it occurred to me that I might be better off just tracing the important details from the mold and then using that to create a 3D model. The Java mold in particular is essentially flat, so this approach had a chance of working. So I took the photo of the mold and traced it by hand on my phone, using a drawing app that supports multiple layers. After cleaning this up a fair amount in Photoshop, I was left with a line drawing like you see here, which I was able to import into Selva 3D, and get this nice clean 3D model. I imported that model into Tinkercad, which allowed me to adjust the mold and add a base. It took several design iterations before I found the best design of mold and the best thickness to use. I had a lot of frustration with dough stuck in my cookie cutters before I realized that using a thin, two-part mold was by far the best option. I didn't try too hard to replicate the Pepperidge Farm cookie recipe. Although I do have the ingredients from the box, I have no way of knowing what the recipe actually was like, and probably couldn't recreate it if I tried, so what I'm using here is essentially just some homemade sugar cookie dough with cocoa added to it to make it chocolate. Now when using the molds, it's important to use some flour or powdered sugar on both the dough and the mold to keep it from sticking, and it's also a good idea to chill it for a while in the refrigerator after rolling it out. Even so, I did sometimes have the problem of dough sticking inside the mold, in which case a toothpick comes in handy. This was one of the better ones. I think they came out pretty well overall, but it was sometimes frustrating. Even when the mold seemed to work well, the cookies would sometimes puff up in the oven or have most of their detail disappear for no apparent reason. I also didn't know exactly how big the cookies were. The final size I went with is probably a little bit bigger than they were in reality. I tried making smaller versions, as you see here, but my printer wasn't able to get enough of the fine detail, so they didn't come out quite as well. And here we have it. At last, my plate of Java cookies and tumbler of milk. 
While these aren't exact replicas by any means, I think I managed to capture the spirit of the originals fairly well. Let's give one a taste, shall we? Dip it in the milk, and... Ah, not bad. Not bad at all. It feels like I'm back in 1983 again. I'll be making this mold available on Thingiverse, but if you just want to drop a cookie cutter, check back soon because I'm going to be putting my newfound skills to the test, designing a cartoony Java cookie cutter in an upcoming video. And also don't forget to check out Richard's channel, Star Wars Obsessed. He's got an impressive collection of vintage Star Wars figures. Thanks for watching!